Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Shelby and today I'm going to be doing a bookish unhaul. It has been over a year since I have cleaned out my shelves. I know this because I filmed my last unhaul last summer and since then my bookish collection has grown quite a bit and we are once again at the place where I can physically fit no more books onto my shelves and I have three shelves. It all kind of came to a head when I was trying to do some reorganization of my bookshelf and as I was moving things around I was finding so many books that I either have not read in years or books that are on my TBR but I just have no more interest in and I've decided to kind of clear those things out to make room for books that make me happier. Trust me this still hurts me so much to get rid of any of my books no matter if I liked it or disliked it because you know they're all just my precious little baby things and getting rid of them is really upsetting but it is time, it is time for me to kind of cleanse my shelves of books that are no longer needed on here and I'm going to be donating the majority of the books to the library but I do have some really cool like special editions and signed editions of some of my favorite books and those I think I will be selling on pangobooks.com. If you don't know, Pango Books is like this bookshop realtor that's completely done online that allows you to buy secondhand books from different creators or like literally any one you can sign up and sell your books and so I'll probably be selling those first like special edition and signed copies there so I will let you guys know when that shop is up and running guys it is editing Shelby here to let you guys know that my pango bookshop is up and running I don't think I'm selling any books for over $20 most of it is in like the 10 to $15 range so if you are in the market for some cheap books or you see a book in this video that is of interest to you definitely be sure to check it out my link is in the description box and the username is grace with books back to the video but for right now we are going to go cleanse my shelf and then I will be back here to talk to you guys about what I'm getting rid of and why In front of me I have 40 books that I pulled off my shelves which is a lot more than I originally thought I was going to but when I started pulling off books that didn't spark joy in me it felt really good so I kind of just kept going with that feeling and now I have 40 books that I am getting rid of which is a lot I kind of sort of tried to group these by genre uh, I did the best I could some of them didn't really fit into any genre I'm going to start with those first and then move move into the bulk of it which is romance and fantasy books that I'm getting rid of. So starting with the two books that don't really fit into the romance fantasy categories, first up I'm getting rid of my Harry Potter unofficial cookbook. The reason I'm getting rid of this one is because I already own a copy and it was actually gifted to me twice because people in my life know me really well and they know that this is something I enjoy. I love cooking and I love Harry Potter so it's a pretty good gift to 
get me, but I have two and I don't need to. So I am getting rid of one of my copies of the unofficial cookbook. Another book I'm getting rid of that doesn't fit into those two categories is actually a mystery thriller book and that is One by One by Ruth Ware. I bought this last December to read and now that it's summer I don't really quite feel like reading this book about uh, people trapped in a snow cabin and them getting picked off one by one by some mysterious person. It sounds really good but I don't really feel like having it wait on my shelves until the next time that it's cold and winter out because that just kind of feels like a waste of space when someone could be enjoying this book now and if I want it in the future I can always download it on my Kindle so I'm also getting rid of one by one. Next up, I have some YA fiction books. At least I'm pretty sure this one is fiction. I haven't read it and it's one that I bought because it was 20% off at Target, but then as I kind of read the description, I didn't really have any interest in it. And that would be Ace of Spades by Farida Abike Ayimide. And I apologize if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly. This looks really good. It looks like it's like a prep school, dark academia book, but it's just not really of interest to me. I would like to give this to someone who would enjoy it and it looks kind of dark as I said it's set in a prep school setting and I'm really excited to give this to someone who actually wants it. The next book I'm getting rid of is You Have a Match by Emma Lord. This is a book I read I think last January like 2021 and essentially it is The Parent Trap. It is about these two sisters who find out through this online genealogy website that they're related to each other but they have different parents so they decide to meet up at a summer camp to figure out like how they can be sisters and like what things had happened in their family's past that kind of pulled them apart. It's a really sweet romance. It has sisterly love. There's a some angst with a boy at the camp for one of the sisters. It's really great and I really enjoyed it and I don't think I'm ever going to really read it again so I'd like to gift it to someone who would. Next up is another YA fiction that has some paranormal elements and that is The Opposite of Always by Justin A. Reynolds. Another favorite book of mine and I absolutely adored this book. It is about Jack and Kate who meet and fall in love, but Kate unexpectedly dies from some kind of unseen illness, and when she dies, Jack is thrust back in time to the moment that they first met again and gets to live through their relationship once more and he has to figure out how to break the cycle because it's kind of like a Groundhog Day situation where he keeps going back to the moment they met when Kate first died. So it's really interesting, it's really sad and poignant and it's just a really deep read that I really quite enjoyed but once again is something I think will belong on the bookshelf of someone else because I just really enjoyed this book and I want to give someone else the opportunity to as well. The next book I'm getting rid of is the Firekeeper's Daughter by Angeline Booley. This is kind of like a murder mystery undercover book and we follow our main character who has lived on a reservation her whole life. She's Native American and she never really felt like she belonged and sadly her mother's fragile state of mind is what is keeping her on this reservation and prevents her from going out and living her life. But when she becomes a witness to a shocking murder, she is recruited by the FBI to go undercover in her reservation to find out who is manufacturing this new illegal dangerous drug that has been hitting the street. I love that this book combines Native American representation with a woman's struggle for her own identity and trying to figure out what her place is in this world, as well as some elements of like a murder, mystery, undercover, secret agent kind of thing. It's a really unique story and it's a really hard-hitting story and I can't wait for someone else to read it. This next book is also paranormal. We're kind of in the fantasy section of my unhaul now, so here we go. It is called The Cold Touch by Isabel Sterling. I got this as like an extra book in my one of my fairy loot boxes and it just never really appealed to me. One of the characters is cursed and when she touches someone she can see how they die and she meets a vampire who has been assigned to Elise to help her master her powers and they kind of start falling in love with each other and it seems really cute just not kind of the thing that I'm personally interested in and I kind of just had it on my shelf because I didn't know what to do with it but now I do so 
it's really a fun cover. I don't know if you like high school sapphic romances, if you like vampires and curses, this is definitely a good book to maybe pick up. Next up I have The Ravens by Cass Morgan and Danielle Page. I read this last fall for like spooky time Halloween and essentially it follows this sorority that is actually a coven and they have to figure out why all these women in their coven or on campus are getting murdered in witchy ways. You follow the perspective of a the president of the sorority slash coven and a new member so it kind of switches POVs throughout the story. I liked it. There were aspects of this book I didn't love um, just like the pacing and I didn't love the dual point of view but it's a good book to read around the Halloween season which is right around the corner which I'm very excited for. So yeah I think I'm just gonna chuck this one off my shelf now. I'm sorry if I'm going through these kind of fast. As I said, there are 40 books in this list and I'm just kind of trying to give them each a little spotlight and then move on. The next book I have here is The Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Leonie Taylor. This is the first book in the Daughter of Smoke and Bone series and it is actually one of the new covers which are super cool. I have only ever read this book in the series. I remember liking it. It was a bit confusing for me. It's definitely told in a really interesting sort of way. In it we follow Karu who has kind of been raised amongst monsters and she meets this angel named Akiva and they kind of have to figure out what their mysterious connection is to each other. There is definitely a better description of this book out there than the one I just gave you. As I said I really liked the first book I just never picked up the rest of the books and at this point you know seven years out from when I first read it I don't think I'm going to so I think it's time for this book to have a new home. The next book I'm getting rid of is Six Crimson Cranes by Elizabeth Lim. I am getting rid of this book because it is another book where I own two copies. I bought this one to buddy read with my friend Eva over at Even Fall Books on Instagram. I will link her down below. She is a wonderful creator and we decided to read this together as a buddy read when it first came out. And then about a month later I got the Fairy Loot Edition in the mail and the Fairy Loot Edition is so stunning, so beautiful, and then I just ended up having two copies of the book which I do not need. So I'm getting rid of this one. It follows Princess Shiori who has seven brothers and her wicked stepmother turns them into cranes and silences Shiori for the magic that's in her blood so that she cannot try to take the throne from her evil stepmother and Shiori must figure out a way to break the curse on her brothers and save the kingdom. Once again really abbreviated summary but I really did enjoy this book. The second book I think recently came out or is about to come out so it's a really great time to start the series. All right the next like 10 books are all fairy loot books that I'm giving away so so I've been a Fairy Loot subscriber I think for like five years now and that means for five years I have gotten a book sent to me from them every single month. Majority of those books I have loved. I am giving away some of the ones I loved because they just don't fit on my shelf anymore and some of them I haven't loved and haven't read so that's what this big stack is. All of them are beautiful additions but it's just time for them to get off my shelves. First up we have Bone Crier's Moon by Catherine Perdue. This is a book about about I think like sirens if I remember correctly. Essentially Bone Criers Moon follows the Bone Criers who are the women who shepherd the souls of the dead to the underworld but once a year one of them must call out to their true love and kill him in order to collect power to help the dead for the next year. I really enjoyed this one. I thought it was a unique story one that I hadn't really seen before. I thought the plot was unique. I just never ended up reading the second book in the series so I don't really see the point in keeping the first if I never intend to continue it. So really great book. I hope whoever reads this gets the second book sooner than I did because I never got it and enjoys it as much as I have. Next up we have Beasts of Prey by Ayana Gray, another fairy loot book that was sent to me as kind of like a secondary book in the box. This one follows this like mystical magical like zoo I guess full of like crazy creatures and these two people who have been thrown in to the jungle together and try to survive all the magic and mayhem. Next up we have This Golden Flame by Emily Victoria. I really like this fantasy because it actually has some really wonderful asexual representation which you don't see a lot in fantasy or just like romance books in general. It follows Karis whose brother has been sold into slavery by the ruling class and she is determined to get him back and Inadvert inadvertently actually awakens this ancient ottoman who 
has all this knowledge of their people and Ottomans have been like extinct for a very long time at this point and she tries to use this creature who is sentient and who has his own choices and she frees him in order for him to help her find her brother. I don't remember much beyond that. This is a different cover than the original. It is beautiful. It is stunning. The inside the cover art is also super cool. So I am just getting rid of this one first of all because if I can't remember the plot of a book um, that's a pretty good indication that it's time for it to get off my shelves and so on. So getting rid of this golden flame. Oh, I have to take a breath. There are still so many books. We can do it. We can get through this. Second wind. Let's go. The next book I'm getting rid of is Girl Serpent Thorn by Melissa Bashardust, and it is about a girl whose touch kills people and she is determined to find her true love to break the curse. But when that happens, not everything is as it seems and she must enlist the help of this witch in order to help her save the kingdom. It's super cool, it's super pretty, it's a standalone book so one and done and I am just excited for someone else to get the chance to read this, especially this beautiful edition. Next up we have Lore by Alexandra Bracken. This is a book that is also a standalone and it follows like the descendants of Greek gods who use their children to carry out their will. So think Percy Jackson but dark Darker. So once every year or like every 10 years or so, all of the different descendants of the gods have to fight each other for who will get the power for that time period. It's bloody and it's terrifying and we follow the girl named Lore who is trying to like avenge her household and avenge those who killed her family in these games. I was kind of mixed feelings about this book. I didn't love it. I had no people who did. I know people who felt the same way as me and it just didn't appeal to me that much but I kept it on my shelf because you know it's pretty and now it's time for it to come off my shelf. Next up is called After Love by Tanya Byrne. This is a book about a girl named Ash who gets into a car accident and dies and when she dies she is invited to join this group of badass women reapers but Ash is having trouble letting go of her past and especially letting go of her first love named Poppy and she will do anything to go and see Poppy again so she kind of bends the rule of, of death in order to make that happen. The next book here is Bright and Pale by Jessica Rubinkowski. This is a book I DNF'd. I read the first two chapters and just kind of realized that the writing style wasn't for me, the story wasn't for me. I was really confused and I have been trying to get myself to DNF more books because I will read a book I don't enjoy all the way to the end which is not the best for my own personal mental health so this is a book I kind of forced myself to put down and say this is not for you but maybe it's for someone else which is why I'm getting rid of it. Next up we have Witches Steeped in Gold by Sienna Smart. This is another gorgeous fairy loot edition. I mean how pretty is it? And you also have some of that fun inside the cover art. It's so nice, it's so pretty, and it is about two witches from rival clans needing to work together to save the future of magic in their realm. I think it looks so good. It even comes with like its own little bookmark string thing. I don't know. Fairy loot editions just pop off in a different way, but this one is extra stunning and I can't wait for someone new to get to read it. Next up we have Jade Fire Gold by June C. Altan. I read this one earlier this year. It wasn't my favorite. I just thought that there were too many predictable plot twists happening and there was just too much going on. Essentially it follows this outcast prince who has been thrown from his home world and will do anything to gain power in order to claim his birthright and a girl who thinks that she's normal but exhibits this dangerous magic that's forbidden in the realm and their paths are kind of thrust together as they try to figure out how to help each other achieve their goals. As I said there was just a lot going on in this book. I didn't really enjoy it. I read it all the way through. I think I gave it two stars so obviously it is leaving my shelves. Next up we have a dragon fantasy. Ooh and that is called Fire with Fire by Destiny Soria. This is about two sisters who come from a family of dragon hunters and essentially what happens is one of the sisters ends up creating this like soul bond with a dragon which kind of pits these two sisters against each other because you have one who's very devoted and dedicated to the cause and the other who now has a dragon to like 
protector and she has this connection with him. It was really cool. If you're a fan of dragons, which I am, you will probably enjoy this. I really enjoyed the sister bonds that were present in this book. I thought they were really interesting, the sister dynamics, and it was really fun to read. Next up, I have a book called The Merciful Crow by Margaret Owen. This is another fairy loop book that I really enjoyed. This is a duology, I believe, but once again, I just never picked up the second book, but I really did enjoy the first book. It is about this group of people who live in this world where this mysterious illness tends to ravage the land, and there is this pack of reapers who essentially are the ones who do the mercy killings of those infected with this virus, and the ones who like burn all the remains, and they're called the Merciful Crows because they are showing mercy to those who have been infected inflicted with this illness and they aren't really beloved you know when the merciful crows come to your town you know someone is ill and they end up teaming up with this crown prince in order to figure out how to save the kingdom from this mysterious illness. I really liked it once again I thought this was a really unique story with a plot I really haven't seen before which I always appreciate in fantasy so I was really excited to read this one and now I'm excited to give it away. All right, next up I have Where Dreams Descend by Janella Angelis. This is a book that was kind of marketed for fans of Caraval and The Night Circus, which were two of my favorite books. But this one just kind of fell flat for me. I found it really confusing. I found the plot confusing. Essentially, it follows this girl who is very sheltered and performs at this like famous mysterious nightclub and she has longed to see the world outside of this place where she's been trapped for years so she goes to this nearby village to enter this contest of magicians but this city where the contest is taking place is cursed and she has to figure out why it's cursed and what to do about it. I think I remember liking the beginning of the book but towards the middle and end it kind of fell apart. I felt like the ending was really rushed and I didn't understand anything that was happening. So much so that by like the end of the book I was just like okay like I didn't care at that point because I was so confused and so lost I just simply did not care what was happening so definitely a sign to get rid of the book. Next we have The Gilded Ones by Namina Forna. This is about this kingdom where the people believe that if the girls have this golden blood they are descendants of the devil and they have devil magic and they should be killed. But a new law set by the king said that anyone with this golden blood is eligible to join his ranks of his army. So when our main character finds out that she has golden blood she is thought to be sentenced to death but really she is recruited to the secret force where she can use her powers for good but not everything is as it seems in this kingdom. I really enjoyed the story. I really enjoyed the folklore associated with it. I thought it was unique. I know this is also a duology but I kind of felt like this book itself could be read on its own. I read it as a standalone and I don't really feel the need to continue the series so I think I'm going to give it up. Next I have a series called The Ash Princess that I'm getting rid of. So I have the first two books in the series. I don't have have the third book but the first two books are Ash Princess and Lady Smoke by Laura Sebastian. Love this book. I love this series. It is about a girl named Theodosia whose kingdom was attacked when she was very young. Her family was all killed and she was taken prisoner by the invaders. For 10 years Theodosia was essentially a captive in her own palace until she finally gets the courage and the fortitude to escape and enact a plan to save her kingdom. I really love this series. I think it's such a good one. I think people do not talk about it enough because it is simply wonderful and I hope that by giving this up or maybe selling them more people will read it and as I said I only have the first two books in the series and one of them's a paperback and one of them's a hardcover which I hate so yeah getting rid of it. The next book I'm getting rid of is called Even the Darkest Stars by Heather Fawcett. This is a book that follows this remote village and this girl who has always dreamed of being one of the royal explorers setting out to map new parts of their kingdom and she finally gets the opportunity to when the empire's greatest explorer ever known arrives in her kingdom and offers her the opportunity to go on this perilous journey to find magic that will save their realm from the endless cold and night. This has betrayals, plot twists, dark turns, and I didn't really love it. I think it was just more of a preference, personal thing. I think that the story was well written 
but I just personally didn't enjoy the book so I'm getting rid of it. The next book I am unhauling is The Star Daughter by Shveta Thakrar. This is a Hindu inspired fantasy book following the daughter of a star. Essentially the star daughter follows a woman named Sheetal who is the daughter of a star who was sent to live on earth with her mortal father but as Sheetal grows up the call of the stars becomes so overwhelming her power suddenly flares out and hurts someone she loves. So she has to go up to the stars and the constellations to compete in these games and a competition between the constellations in order to get the power necessary to save the one she loved. I loved the mythology behind this story. I thought it was so fascinating. I loved the idea of stars having politics and families and how the descendants of stars were kind of forced to fight for them and I liked Sheetal as a character. It was a really wonderful standalone story that was just a really great young adult fantasy so I can't wait to pass this off to the next person who will enjoy it. I have a few more fantasy books and then we're gonna go to the romance but first up I have A River of Royal Blood by Amanda Joy. This is a book about two sisters who have been pitted against each other for the throne. One has very powerful dark magic. The other one has magic that she doesn't know how to control. Both sisters have known that they will need to compete against each other maybe to the death in order to win the throne. So one sister goes off to find a way to control her powers so that when she meets her sister again she will be stronger. If you're a fan of the series Three Dark Crowns by Kendare Blake I think you will also enjoy this book. It has that kind of dark sister competition that I think is so interesting and so fascinating to look into those kinds of relationships and it also has some romance in here as well so I'm really excited to give this on to the next person. The next book I'm giving away is Serpent and Dove by Shelby Maharan. This is a book about when a witch and a witch hunter have to pretend to be married and the witch hunter doesn't know that the woman he married is a witch. Yes, it is confusing, it is enemies to lovers, it to the max with a really rich world building and really fascinating characters on all sides so I just love this book series so much. I own two copies so I'm giving away this one. This one has really pretty gold sprayed edges which is really fun and I just really love this series and this debut from Shelby Maharan so I'm really excited to give one of my copies away. The next book I have here is called Fairy Man by Claire McFall. This is an international bestseller that was recently released in the US. I think it had only been released in the UK before this and it follows what happens when a young girl dies before her time and she has to go on this perilous journey to the afterlife with a reaper and this reaper is kind of jaded and he has been through this process so many times but there's something about this new arrival that sparks his interest and that makes him feel for the first time in a really long time and as they go on this journey together both are kind of questioning they want to reach the end which is the afterlife life so they have to go through the underworld in order to reach the afterlife and it's kind of about them two learning about each other and forming this relationship and this bond so if you are a fan of like forbidden romance this is a really great story I mean kind of pulling from Hades and Persephone kind of not but still just a fascinating story nonetheless Finally for fantasy I have two series I'm getting rid of. The first up is the Aurora Rising series. I only have the first two books. They're both hardcover, um, Aurora Rising and Aurora Burning. I really liked this book until I learned some not some amazing stuff about the authors. I know that there's a lot of controversy over Jay Kristoff and Amy Kaufman and it kind of has made me feel weird about keeping these books especially I'm pretty sure the next two books in the series are already out and I haven't picked them up so there was just kind of no point keeping these on my shelf if I never plan to buy anything from those authors so giving these away probably going to donate them because yeah I don't really want to get money for these books and I don't want to keep them. Finally, the last fantasy series I'm giving away is An Ember in the Ashes by Saba Tahir. I have the first two books of the old covers before they changed it for the third series and they're really beautiful but I really need to go back and reread the series. I read the first two books and then I just never picked up the rest of the series and now they all have different covers so I think I'm going to give away these two and then if I want to go back and reread the series and finally finish it I will buy the new covers. So if you're interested in the original 
original covers for these books. I have them. They're super cool. And yeah, I'm going to be selling these as well. Whew, all right, guys. I have six romances here. And then that is the unhaul. So bear with me. The first romance I am getting rid of is Isn't It Romantic by Lissa K. Adams. This is another secondary book that I have. I bought myself a copy when it first came out and then my friend got me a copy for my birthday. So I am getting rid of the one that I bought myself because I'd much rather have the one that my friend bought me. And this is the third, fourth book in the romance book club series which is one of my favorite romance series of all times that follows all of these high power players in Nashville who use romance books to help them fix the relationships with women in their lives. So in this one we follow a hockey player who has a green card marriage or like an arranged marriage to his childhood best friend but neither one of them are really treating it like an actual relationship. I think that he loves her and she loves him but they don't know that about each other and there's a lot of other factors going on in the book but it's a really cute story. I think it's really romantic and I just love this series so much so happy to give away a secondary copy. Next up I have The Matzo Ball by Jean Meltzer. This is a Hanukkah inspired romance book. I read it back in December. I thought it was okay. I definitely could have gone with like less like in your face Jewishness if that's what I mean because as someone who is Jewish who loves having a Hanukkah romance or a winter romance that is isn't Christmas I could have done like without all of the references to Judaism I felt like it was a lot of like in my face um, but that was just my opinion maybe someone who doesn't have as much familiarity with the religion as I do may enjoy it more having those references but it kind of felt like overdone to me personally next up I'm getting rid of the second first impressions by Sally Thorne this was my least favorite novel of 2022 so yes I'm getting rid of it it is a romance between this girl who works at this retirement retirement home and the guy whose father just bought it so she has to convince him to keep this place running so yes really interesting I hated it so I guess not that interesting to me personally next up I have playing the palace by Paul Rudnick in which a prince falls in love with a commoner essentially this is a less good version of red white and royal blue just not as good it's short it doesn't have a lot of character development it goes really fast so just you'd be better off reading red white and royal blue so getting rid of this one next i have this little like mass market paperback book called the blood king by abigail owen and i got this book in like a box I think I don't even remember what box it wasn't very loot and I cannot read this font it's too small I can't I physically can't read this book so I'm gonna get rid of it the final book I'm gonna get rid of is the crown of gilded bones by Jennifer L Armentrout I do like the from blood and ash series and I'm getting rid of this book because it's the only book from the series I own I've read all of the other ones on Kindle Unlimited I don't know why I just have a physical copy of this book but it just kind of feels out of place on my shelves so I'm getting rid of it I feel like I don't have a voice anymore but those were all 40 of the books that I am getting rid of thank you guys so much for following along in my video and bearing with me once again I'm hoping to sell some of those special editions on Pango books but the rest I will be donating to my local library and that is it for this video I hope you guys enjoyed it don't forget to like subscribe and comment hit the notification bell to get updates on when I post I post every single week and I will see you in my next video bye Let's get back on track. Stars line up, that's that I've been attached, just looking out We moved so fast, was moving south Through my secret sauce, moving in and out Miss how you gloss